Okay, thank you, uh, John, for the invitation, and it's, I'm very glad to be here to share some of the research we do at Nemours. And um, my lab is focused on T cell immunology, and one of our projects is to develop T cell immunotherapy for severe allergic diseases. And allergy, in, a, in essence, is a single molecule disease. It's mediated by this special antibody called immunoglobin E, or IgE. It's secreted by B cells, and it's bound by to the uh, high affinity FC epsilon receptor 1 receptor, or receptor 1. And upon cross-linking by the allergen, um, it triggers the degranulation of the mast cells, or basophils, and the release of a bunch of inflammatory um, compounds, for example, cytokines, histamine, chemokines, and so on. And triggers, you know, different symptoms depends on where the inflammation takes place. And I'm pretty sure with the spring coming, many of you will have hay fever, allergy to pollens, but it's not a big deal. Usually you take a pill of Zyrtec and put it under control. But um, some of the allergies are not so easy to be controlled. Um, for example, you have food allergy, allergic asthma, eczema, chronic hive, and so on. And take, for example, severe allergic asthma. And first of all, asthma affects millions of people in the U.S., causing more than 3,000 deaths per year and lots of money to manage. And uh, about two-thirds of the asthma are, can be characterized as allergic asthma. It means they are triggered by allergens, like most commonly pollen or uh, dust mites and so on. <clears throat> And 10% of the allergic asthmas can be characterized as severe asthma, which means um, they can have uncontrolled symptoms and frequent asthma attacks despite, despite of treatment with the drugs that are highly toxic, or has a lot of side effects, for example, high dose of corticosteroids. And so far, there's no cure. So if IgE is the key mediator, of allergies, it follows that if you, we can suppress IgE, of course, you can manage the, the allergic symptoms. Um, there is indeed such a drug. It's called amalizumab, or Zolier, brand name. It is a humanized monoclonal antibody that binds to IgE, okay, and, and depletes it uh, from your bloodstream. It's approved for severe allergic asthma and chronic hives, and it's very effective, and it's, it's sold by Roche, and they, they, they make $1.5 billion per year, so it's drug. What's that? Uh, originally, it, it's a mouse antibody, but they humanize it by changing parts of the antibody to a human, so that a human does not develop you know, antibodies against this antibody, okay? So, but, but in, the, in the pharmaceutical company, they make it with the Cho cells, the genetic engineer. And, but it does have disadvantages. So number one, being an antibody has a half-life around one week in your body. So you, it requires pretty frequent administration about twice, or well, actually twice a month, sorry for the mistake. And it's expensive, uh, it's about 20,000 a year for the drug alone, um, plus you have to visit the doctors, of course. And it's only recommended for patients with relatively low level of IgE, um, small, I mean, lower than 700 units per, uh, units per mil. And also has a risk of um, developing systemic anaphylaxis. I mean, it is humanized, but it's still a protein with a foreign source and, and can potentially trigger, you know, severe allergic responses, you know, the RNA is, I mean, it's supposed to treat allergy, but it's better so it can trigger allergic responses. So can we do better than that? Um, our idea is to, instead of focusing on the IgE itself, we're going to, we'd like to kill the B cells that produce the IgE using the T cells, which is another side type of lymphocytes. And it turned out all the IgE producing B cells express a different version of the IgE, it's a, it's, it has a transmembrane domain, it's called a membrane IgE on the cell surface, and we can use that as a biomarker to, for, for their recognition. And if we can engineer a receptor, to an artificial T cell receptor, 
to recognize this biomarker, uh, then we can have the T cells to kill the IgE producing B cell. And we, we know that T cells are professional killers of the immune system, right? So normally, their function is to kill the cells in your body that are infected by viruses. So uh, all we have to do is design a receptor so that we can de redirect direct its awesome killing power to the IgE secreting B cells. And this type of therapy is called adoptive T cell therapy. And basically, we take the blood from the patient, and we can isolate the T cells, and we genetically engineer the T cells to express the artificial receptors uh, so that they can you know, recognize new targets and put it back in the patients. And the beauty of the T cells is like they, they migrate all over your body, so they can seek and destroy whatever cells you don't like. And this is the structure of a typical artificial receptor. We call it a chimeric antigen receptor. It has an extracellular binding domain that interacts with the biomarker. Usually, it's derived from uh, variable regions of the antibody, okay? uh, but it's made in a single chain format. And then transmembrane domain, of course, and then intracellular signal domains that, keep the, that help the T cells to stay alive and recognize and respond to uh, the target cells. And we think this method has the advantage of possible long-term effect effectiveness. So the reason is that when you put this engineered T cells in your body, it can take on a so-called memory phenotype, which means that they can live in your body for a very long time. Therefore, elimin continuously eliminate IgG producing B cells and uh, to achieve long-term suppression of IgE. So we're hoping that we can control allergy symptoms uh, for years or decades with a, just a single treatment. And, you know, of course, hopefully we can, you know, eliminate the symptoms altogether for a lifetime, and that we will call it a cure. So you may have heard on the news that uh, CAR T cell therapy is pretty hot today, these days, and uh, uh, mainly because for the first time, immunotherapy uh, has been shown to, to cure cancer. And um, in particular, uh, B cell cancers, and in this case, they use a CD19-specific CAR artificial receptor. And CD19 is a pan B cell marker. So you put these B cells in your body, and it will, it's going to wipe out all the B cells, cancerous or normal. Um, so in the clinical trials, recent years, uh, it achieved very impressive results with a long-term remission rate of up to 90%. And as a result, um, last year, FDA just approved two such drugs. Um, one is, um, they, they both target CD19, and both for B cell cancer. One is for um, ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Another is for B cell lymphoma. And both target CD19 developed by Penn or NCI and uh, sold by the company Novartis and uh, Kite Pharma. So this gives us a hope that, you know, maybe we can achieve something similar uh, for allergic diseases. So for that purpose, we have uh, two strategies, strategies for car design. The, the first car recognizes uh, a region called EMPD, or extracellular membrane proximal domain. It exists only on membrane IgE, not on the secreted form. Okay, and the, to recognize, we're going to use the variable regions from a monoclonal antibody that, are, that is specific for, for this domain. <clears throat> the second strategy is to use the natural receptor of the IgE to recognize it. And here we're going to use the alpha domain of the receptor 1 and put it on, put it, you use the extracellular domain and link it with the intracellular signaling components. So let's look at the first strategy, uh, EMPD specific CAR. So we developed a number of antibodies to recognize that domain. It's about 54 amino acids. and uh, use the antibody to stain a cell that express the member IgE. As you can see, they bind to the cells at different levels, and naturally we pick the one that, that bound the best. And we cloned the variable region, made the CAR construct, and you know, made lentiviral vectors to express the CARs on the human CD, CD T cells. Uh, as you can see, they're expressed at a pretty decent level. 
And then we want to see whether the car can mediate T cell responses to a target cell, where here we use U266 cells, which is a myelo my human myeloma cell that, as you can see, express a relatively low level of membrane IgE. And we first look at T cells production of interferon gamma, which is cytokine. Um, it, it's a readout for T cell activation. <clears throat> and as you can see, the mock transduced T cells th without the CAR uh, didn't produce any, but um, the CAR T cells produce a massive amount. Massive amount. <clears throat> and also, we um, carry out a killing assay to look at whether the T cells can kill the target cell. Uh, it, it's a luciferase based on killing assay. As you can see, the mock transduced, uh, not very si significant killing, but the CAR T cells uh, killed close to 50% of, uh, of target cells. So that, that was um, relatively straightforward. Um, but uh, the receptor 1 based CAR using Natural, natural IG receptor is a little bit more complicated because not only we have to make sure that uh, this extracellular domain of the receptor 1 can bind to the member IgE and trigger the killing of the target cell, but also we have to avoid the recognition of the killing of cells with secreted IgE bound through receptors. Okay, the, the IgEs are secreted, soluble form, but they got captured by some cells, not the cells we want to target, uh, through receptor 1 or receptor 2, or two different, different, different receptors. And we, want, we don't want to kill them because um, you know, th this receptor is expressed on many normal cells, like mast cells, uh, basal fields, um, all the B cells, and the nucleic cell, macrophage, and so on. But fortunately, we don't think it's going to happen because um, IgE, the soluble form, has only one binding site for receptor 1. Okay? So if this binding site is occupied by the receptor 1 on this particular cell, it won't be able to interact with, it, with the car. So it cannot be recognized. On the other hand, the receptor 2, it, it does bind to a different binding site uh, than the receptor 1. So uh, IgE has two binding sites, one for receptor 1, one for receptor 2. However, they inhibit each other, uh, allosterically inhibit each other. Which means, if the IgE is bound to the receptor two, on the on the on the two bi receptor two binding site, the receptor one and binding site is not active, so it cannot interact with the receptor one on the car anymore. <clears throat> so that kind of non-specification should not happen. The third the, the third issue, the final issue, is that you know we have free IgE floating in the, in the serum, so they could bind to the I, uh, the car, and block their interaction to the target. You know, so that has to be avoided. Uh, but we think we can do that through um, muting the binding, binding domains to a lower affinity. So that not, you know, only a, small, only a portion of the cars are blocked. Uh, there are, they are cars available to still recognize and, and, and mediate killing of target cells. So we made uh, six mutations uh, using point mutations or combination point mutations to reduce their affinity to different degrees. And we made the car expressed on a jerkhead T cell, which is a T cell line, human T cell line. As you can see, they're expressed pretty nicely. But when we look at the binding, they're binding to IgE, we found that the M3 and the M5, they actually don't bind very well. Uh, their affinity properties are too low. So we dropped those and continue to investigate the rest of them. And then here we want to look at how T cells, CAR T cells respond to the real target we want to target, um, which is memory IgE expressing B cells, or a cell we don't, we don't want to target, which is a cell expressing uh, with secreted IgE capture through receptor 2. So this is the U266 I just showed you with a low level of memory IgE and Remos, which is a B cell expressing receptor 2. Uh, but, and with a lot of IgE capture, solid IgE capture. <clears throat> and in this assay, we look at T cell activation uh, using CD69 op regulation as a marker. And as you can see, the wild type, which is a high affinity version of the car, responded to U266, and, but their responses are inhibited by the presence of free IgE, 
which makes sense because they bind to the free energy at a very high affinity. And that, that, that binding is going to block their interaction with the target cell. And it's in the dose dependent manners. Okay, and then, but it, it did not respond to Ramos, to these guys, with a lot of secret IgE capture on the surface, which is, which is good. But if you look at um, the mutant car, I and mean, one with the 27 fold decrease of affinity, you can see that uh, the response to U266 is actually even better. And more importantly, now they, they are not sensitive to the presence of secret IgE anymore. Okay, they tolerate the presence of secret IgE. And also, they don't respond to um, the cells with secreted IgE captured through receptor 2. And uh, mutant 123 behave pretty much similar. M6 is a little bit lower, but still better than the ball type. So th in this assay, we look at whether the CAR T cell will respond to a cell with secreted IgE captured through receptor 1. In this case, we use LAD2 cell, which is a mass cell, mass cell line. <coughs> Um, expressing a lot of receptor 1, and we can load the cells with a lot of secret IgE. And as you can see here, still we're looking at the cd 9 re um, response. Uh, this is a positive control using plate-bound IgE. And, but you know, either, neither the wild type or any of the mutants showed any significant response to these cells, which means you know, our car does not, not specifically target. And finally, uh, that, that was with drug cat cell lines. So we expressed the M2 car, which is the mutant number two, on um, human, primary human CD8 T cells, expressed pretty nicely. And we look at the interferon gamma production as a marker for T cell activation. So as you can see, the car, the um, T cell expressed in the car produced uh, more interferon gamma than the control. And uh, importantly, this pattern does not change when you put in a pretty high, num high concentration of secret IgE. Okay, it, it tolerates, this kind of response tolerates the presence of secret IgE. And here it's just, uh, it's a kidding assay, um, <clears throat> those dependent kidding assay, and when you mix the T cells and target cells at different ratios, you can see increased kidding response, uh, and the T cell expressed in the M2 car um, killed much better than So in summary, uh, we, we designed two distinct cars, uh, and they both mediated specific T cell set toxicity to um, membrane IgE expressing B cells. And to the EMPD specific cars mediated human T cell acating uh, of the MIgE positive target cells. And the, the FC receptor 1 based on cars did the same thing, and they avoided acating. I mean, they are, sensitive, they are not sensitive to the presence of soluble IgEs and they do not kill um, cells with secret IgE capture on cell surface through the receptors. Okay, so that's, um, that's it. I want to thank um, uh, the support from uh, Nemours and uh, NIH and our lab members, especially Brittany and Dana. Thank you. <laughs>